Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A bill that would trigger a new round of COVID restrictions on restaurants appears to have the blessing of state Republicans. Tens of thousands of dollars meant for children in need. Tonight, the feds say a former charity CEO used that money for vacations, home improvements, and more. But we'll start here at 6 with Storm Tracker 4, showing a lot of wet out there, but thankfully not too severe as uh, weather is rolling through Metro Detroit right now. We could be seeing rain for several hours, though, this evening. It looks like it. Ben is tracking the northward trajectory of these storms for us tonight. Hey, Ben. Hey, Sandra and Devin. Yeah, other than the timing, which you never want to see rain during the evening commute, but this stuff has weakened, and so we're getting some much-needed rain. We're getting rid of a lot of the thunder. You can see just a few lightning strikes that are left on this, and everything is starting to weaken as it moves to the north. Finally getting a little bit of a break in the south zone, although we're paying close attention. A lot of the thunder, you can see just a few lightning strikes that are left on this, and everything is starting to weaken as it moves to the north. Finally getting a little bit of a break in the south zone, although we're paying close attention to this line of thunderstorms, broken line, there across northern parts of Indiana. Notice that this has got a pretty hefty northerly component to it. A lot of this is going almost due north, so there's still some question as to how much of this is going to end up in southeast Michigan, but there's quite a bit of uh, real estate between the back edge of what we've got now and what's going to be coming a little bit later on tonight. We don't think any of this stuff is going to be severe. In fact, we got pulled out of the marginal risk for severe weather, so it does look like most of this stuff will be garden variety showers with some rumbles of thunder in it as we get through tonight. Temperatures relatively steady here in the low to mid 60s. Some places still in the 70s where that rain has not shown up, but don't worry, you'll be with the rest of us here in the 60s before too long. The big story in the uh, seven day forecast is what's going to be coming over the weekend. We've got a really big soaker on Saturday and Sunday. We'll check that out for you and you can track it on the local forecasters app free in your app store as always by searching WDIV guys. OK, Ben, now to the latest on the coronavirus as Michigan continues to lead the country in new cases per capita. Yeah, the state reporting 7,819 new cases in the last 24 hours. And sadly, we've lost another 73 Michiganders, including 43 from a review of vital records. The seven day positivity rate is above 16 percent. That's as of Wednesday. On the vaccine front, the state's going to launch mobile vaccine clinics in Detroit and Hamtramck. These clinics will have the capacity to vaccinate up to 500 residents a day. We've just learned, though, due to the state's surge in COVID cases, Representatives Debbie Dingell and Fred Upton have sent a letter to the White House urging the Biden administration to immediately increase the allocation of vaccine doses to Michigan. In the meantime, a top doctor is calling for help from Governor Whitmer as hospitals across the state are filling up with more COVID patients. That's right. That doctor is Ju Dr. Justin Dimmick, chair of surgery at Medicine, Michigan Medicine, tweeted, quote, we are starting to cancel surgical cases again to accommodate rapidly accelerating COVID-19 admissions. Entire state is high risk. Bars and restaurants are open. People are out and about. No new restrictions. We need some help, end quote. Michigan has the highest hospitalization rate in the country right now. Multiple state COVID data points are severe enough that under a bill passed in the Republican controlled state Senate, that data would trigger a shutdown of indoor dining. And that puts COVID politics in the state in a very interesting <laughs> situation, really, to say the least. Mar McDonald has the very latest from Lansing. Sandra Devin, it is interesting. The Michigan Senate has been a fierce critic of the governor over her restrictions and shutdowns, especially when it comes to restaurants. And yet, a bill that it has already passed would shut everything down as is right now. Let me show you. The bill that has passed the Senate uses a clear metric based system for determining when to roll back dining density or even shut it down completely as far as indoor dining goes. Hospital beds in use, positivity rate and duration of time. Under the current bill, which has not gone through the House yet, with the current surge in case numbers, it would automatically trigger a minimum rollback to 25% density to a likely shutdown of indoor dining. The Senate is on break this week and no senators were available for an interview, but we did get a statement, quote, we can debate the particulars, but the fact remains that the governor has never put forward what she or her officers use to make decisions. It is an interesting flip in the restriction tug of war in Lansing over the past year. A GOP bill, if signed, would shut things down while Whitmer is currently refusing to do so. 
For example, we have already surpassed the hospitalizations the governor used to justify last fall's, quote, pause to save lives. Restaurant owners dread renewed restrictions. At Moots in downtown Detroit, they're strictly abiding by all the rules currently in place. Scaling back is only going to do nothing but hurt us and the community, in my opinion. You know, it's more than just money. It's more than just the business that comes in. If I have to scale back, then the use for that employee goes away. Don't shut down everybody. The latest out of the governor's office tonight, no new restrictions. Instead, a push for everybody to get vaccinated. Devin Sandra, back to you. Okay, Mara, now to the heartbreaking COVID fight of a Michigan man with special needs. Vincent Welch was looking forward to getting the vaccine, but he's now on a ventilator. Sean Lay has been talking with Vincent's family. Uh, Sean, this is uh, someone whose uh, daily life would seemingly put him at very low risk of catching the virus, and yet he did. You would think so. He's 35 years old. Vincent rarely goes out of his house. And how all of this unfolded, you mentioned the word, it is heartbreaking. I got COVID and that caused my stroke. Susan Welch has recovered from COVID and is recovering from a stroke. She just returned to work as a Walmart greeter in Sandusky in Sanilac County. That's where she thinks she got the virus. You know, when people come into Walmart and I have to tell them they have to put a mask on, and they laugh at me and they say, no, it's just a government hoax. That's what's been the hardest about going back to work is because I've seen what it can do. That's because at home is Susan's 35 year old son, Vincent, living with Down syndrome, caught the virus and it hit him like a freight train. He went from having like what we thought was his yearly uh, allergies to fell on the floor in his face and turned blue. Vincent's oxygen levels plummeted in a hospital in his area. He was put on a ventilator, then had to be airlifted to Michigan Medicine in Ann Arbor. They called for my permission to do a trach tomorrow morning. So that's what they're gonna do, trying to go a little bit more comfortable. Susan is seeing what COVID is doing to her son, and she's still facing COVID dangers at work. They're still just laughing at me about, we're not gonna wear a mask because we don't have to. It's hard on me because I want to say, well, you should see my son and then you made me believe me. You really feel for Susan, the mom there in Vincent, who is over at Michigan Medicine. Susan cannot go see him. No visitors right now due to the upswing in COVID at Michigan Medicine. No visitors. She is saying that there's a slight improvement in his breathing. That is good news. And she says basically prayers from her community up in Santa Land County are helping her get through these days right now. Back to you. Such a sad situation, Sean. We are all uh, pulling the night for Vincent. All right, thanks. The former CEO of a local charity facing federal charges tonight for allegedly fleecing his employer and using the money for a wide variety of personal things, personal expenses, including vacations and home improvements. Rod Maloney is live tonight with more on those allegations. And Rod, how much money are we talking about here? Well, Sandra, the 26-page uh, report, the complaint uh, with the feds today, say it's in at least $70,000. And what the, is most disconcerting about this is that they say that it's a charity that deals with among the poorest children in, in the entire state, and they have facilities all across the state. And it's a situation where they turned up this spending in an internal audit. This is 56-year-old John Lynch of Gross Point Park while he served as CEO of the Holy Cross organization. Yet four years after his dismissal, the feds arrested him and brought him before a federal judge for arraignment today. They charged him with wire and mail fraud and theft from an organization receiving federal funds. The independent audit of Holy Cross's books turned up spending here at Lynch's home. The spending started, they say, with a new roof and eventually led to making payments on the home itself. The complaint says Lynch spent $12,500 on that new roof, $7,400 nearly put on the company charge card, nearly $7,200 including considerable late fees on the mortgage and another $2,700 on Lynch's own auto repair. But the alleged spending on the charity's dime went much further. $39,150 spent on a security contract with a brother-in-law for charity buildings. The feds say that Lynch kicked back nearly $22,000 to himself. And then the feds say Lynch spent $7,290 on vacations to Mackinac Island in Florida, along with spending on clothing and expensive meals. Local 4 reached out to the Holy Cross, and in a statement it said, quote, his employment with the agency ended in April 2017 after being in that role for two years. And to clarify 
clarify information about the organization formerly run as Boysville of Michigan. It said, quote, in 2019, Boysville of Michigan became Holy Cross Services, an independent nonprofit organization, not under the auspices of any diocese, end quote. Now, John Lynch didn't look anything like what he did in that picture there in the courtroom today. He had uh, long hair, facial hair. Uh, it looked very disheveled when he was in handcuffs in the courtroom, even though it was a Zoom hearing. Uh, in the meantime, he also was put out on bond, a $10,000 personal bond. He did bond out on that, uh, and it was not, uh, he didn't have to put the cash down. Uh, and so it's a situation where the, the uh, organization is saying that they have reached out to their donors to tell them that they have put in new procedures to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again in the future. Reporting live, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right. Thank you, Rod. Calling it an epidemic and an international embarrassment, President Biden unveiled new measures today in hopes of combating gun violence. He issued six new executive orders. They include restricting ghost guns, which are built from parts that you can buy online, targeting braces for pistols by requiring them to be registered, making new investments in intervention programs in violence-prone areas, and requiring the Department of Justice to publish model legislation on what are known as red flag laws. That's where families or, or police even can ask a court to temporarily take away someone's gun. The NRA is calling the orders extreme. It's not going to make us any safer. It just infringes on our Second Amendment rights. Nothing, nothing I'm about to recommend in any way impinges on the Second Amendment. they are phony arguments suggesting that these are Second Amendment rights at stake from what we're talking about. But no amendment, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. President's executive action can only go so far, so he is now urging the Senate to pass two House bills that would increase background checks. All right, ahead, an emotional day for a local community that recently lost its police chief to COVID-19. Today, they swore in his predecessor, or rather his successor. And here's Dr. McGeorge. Pfizer's vaccine trial in children under age 12 is already underway. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, how the first participants are doing and what their parents hope they'll take away from participating in the trial.